Friday Night Lights is sponsored by Garland Shelton Auto Group, Centex Roof Systems, and Optimum. Welcome into a week three edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Nicole Sharon and we've got a jam packed show for you tonight with over 10 highlights and some fun matchups slated on the schedule. Now let's get the party started with our game of the week between Belton and Huntsville for a 5A Division II showdown. Belton, the reigning district champs looking to keep the undefeated train rolling. Reese Rumfield under center, bullet pass to Diego Coleman and that six. Tigers strike first, 7 nothing. Later in the second, Huntsville facing third and long. Austin Taylor puts everything into this one. Yeah, that's a tutty to Melton Green, the third, tied up at sevens. Just before the half, Belton, well, they're looking for more. Rumfield, he drops back here, lets it fly straight down center, and oh my gosh, absolutely blown up by Shiloh Jones on third down. But Tigers say, no, we're going for it on fourth. Rumfield looking. He scrambles left, shoots deep, and it's intercepted by Jacob Ruffin. And here he goes off to the races. But he's brought down midfield, and we head into the locker room tied up at sevens. Second half, fourth down for Huntsville. Austin Taylor weighs his options, decides to take off. He's gone, and that's a big-time Hornets score when they needed it. But hey, Belton, yeah, they answer the call and they answer right back. Tigers get tricky. Double reverse flea flicker from these guys. <clears throat> Floors all the camera and they, oh, that's a beautiful flag right there. Well, Belton's about to answer right back here. Oh, they're getting tricky. That's a flea flicker. Oh my gosh, Diego Coleman on his back and that's a touchdown, Tigers. Final score, 28-21, Belton. And Ben Peck is live with the very excited and pumped up Tigers team. The trophy presentation is the favorite part. Ben, take it away. Thanks, Nicole. It took everything they had, but Belton stays undefeated 3-0. They win our week three game of the week. Congrats to the Tigers. Yeah! <laughs> All right, so I'm here with head coach Brett Sniff and coach. It seemed like time and time again that second half, it was maybe going to get away from you guys, especially with the home crowd here, but y'all got play after play after play, four forced fumbles in the second half. Just what was your message to your guys to just keep hanging with it? I mean, that's what we do. We, we got a lot of grit and determination, and those guys play hard every day and every week, um, and they just find a way, and that's what good teams do. And here with the quarterback as well, Reese Rumfield. Reese, we didn't get to see it, but take us through game-winning touchdown pass. You had a Rayshon Peoples there with about a minute and a half to go. Yeah, you know, I mean, I trust my receivers. You know, I was just looking at end zone. They left him wide open. I was like, that's a mistake. So yeah. I took it up. It I knew Ray Ray was going to get it. I trust him. So. And just real quick, what was y'all's message as players to say when y'all were going through those ups and downs to just stay as even kill as possible? Yeah, you know, I mean, we were just trying to compete. And, you know, we were, it was, <laughs> oh, you know, we just, we just wanted to, I mean, we knew we had a score. We just wanted to. Uh, we, uh, we wanted to win, I don't know. I just trust my players. Hey, that came through, definitely through the highlights. Well, again, Belton stays undefeated with a 28-21 win over the Huntsville Hornets. Congrats again to the Tigers. Ben, I'm jealous because you just got an awesome front row seat to a pretty incredible matchup. Well, up to Class 6A, Temple hosting College Station, looking for redemption after falling to the Cougars last year and a big night at Wildcat Stadium celebrating 800 wins. But College Station came well to crash the party. Arrington Maiden under center, hands it off to Wilson Staff, weaves through traffic, breaking ankles and off to the race as he goes, riding solo for the first six of the game. Cougars lead 7-0. College Station keeps rolling. Four minutes into the half, Maiden drops back, looks, finds his guy staff once again. He hugs the line, walking the tightrope, and all the way to the end zone for another six to widen the shutout 14-0. After another Cougar score, Wildcats wake up. Second quarter, Damarian Willis in the slot, looks, looks, takes it himself, jukes through traffic. He's knocked down at the one-yard line. And next snap, well, the Wildcats, they punch it right in for the first score of the night to make it 21-6 Cougs after a miss point after. Final score, 60-22. College Station rolls on this one. Now over to an all-Brazos Valley showdown. 1-1 one one Brian hosting 1-1 one one Brenham. First quarter action. Quarterback Cason Bird's going to throw it deep to wide receiver Tyson Turner. Yeah, that's the first score of the game. That's why he's going to Texas Tech, folks, right there. Cubs looking to answer back and do 
just that. Thanks to Jacoby Dixon, who takes the handoff left, finds the end zone, and we're tied up at sevens just like that. Vikings looking to strike again. This time, it's Bird to Terrace Lewis in the big time play. He looks, 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 launches it downfield. Yeah, that's an easy tutty for the guys. And they take the lead 14-7. Final score here, Cubs roll with this one in a tight matchup, 31-24 final. Now let's go to the scoreboard. District 4, 5A Division 1 action underway. Ellison has a bye. Lake Belton, yeah, y'all saw that one on a Thursday. An overtime thriller. Red Oak take this one 38-34. Shoemaker at Midlothian, 26-35 final. Cleburne, Colleen. Colleen rolls with this 37-13. And Waco, Granbury, tight game. Granbury takes this one 17-14. Now in all Central Texas showdown, the Yeoman looking to break Connolly's undefeated streak. And right here, Connolly, Jamari and Vincent takes the snap, hands it off to Jylan Vincent. Ethan Ellis, who gets to the outside, takes off across the Yeoman 50 and is brought down at the line. Later for Cameron Yo, Braylon Drake here hands it off to Zach Evans. He breaks free for a big run into cadet territory. And he's taken down by five guys, it looks like right there. Drake here, he scrambles, takes it himself for the score. Cameron Yo gets on the board. Next cadet possession. They say, you know, we got to get it rolling, guys. Vincent hands it off to that guy. Yeah, you know him. Senior key for Sibley. He gets to the outside with room to run, gets to the 20, shakes it, defender, takes it in for six. Oh my gosh, this guy is an absolute stud. Connolly scores, and our very own Mike Rogers is live with head coach Terry Garrick. Mike, what an awesome game to have a front row seat at. What's it looking like out there? Yeah, definitely an awesome game here, Nicole. Now, Coach, there was a big turnover there at the end of the game, kind of helping you guys seal it after what was really a back-and-forth game going forward. What do you think of your defense stepping up and in crunch time of that game? Uh, you know, that was, a, that was a pivotal point in the game. Uh, we were having a hard time stopping them. They were having a hard time stopping us. And um, our defense came up big right there, and that, that kind of made a turning point on us where we could get up by 14 there. Um, and that kind of sealed the game for us. I, I was proud of our kids, you know. Uh, we had to make a bunch of adjustments tonight, and uh, they handled it on the sideline. And so I was proud of our kids at that point. And now, Coach, you're taking on China Spring going forward. Now, what do you think you've learned from this game, or when you go back and watch the tape, you think you'll learn, and any adjustments that you think are going to be made going into that game next week? Well, number one, I know we're not where we need to be. You know, uh, we got a lot of things to work on. We're playing a really good team next week. Um, and that's not taken away from Cameron tonight. If you play the Cameron Yeoman, you know they're a tough football team. And, uh, but we got to get ready for next week. It's a big game, uh, but at the same time, it doesn't define us, and it doesn't. It's not. Our, it's not one of our goals for this year because it's a non-district game. So we just got to get better every week and get ready for district. Big game and a lot more season to come. Nicole, we are live here in Conley. Back to you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mike. I'm pumped for that Conley China Spring matchup. And we're going to have to take our first break here on Friday Night Lights. But after this, it's all about Class 3A highlights. We'll be right back.
Welcome back into Friday Night Lights. We now take it on down to Class 3A with some all area matchups on deck. After winning just one game last year, McGregor now looking to get its first one of the season at the home of the Hornets. 0 2 McGregor visiting Gatesville. Yeah, it's a Hornet country. We start the game with Gatesville quarterback Jacob Newark. Uh oh. Whoop. Oh, he's got a little slip up here at the first snap, but that didn't stop anything. McGregor gets possession of the ball, but it doesn't take long for Jacob Singer to be taken down right there at the yard line, still gaining just a few yards. For Gatesville, the star of the show was running back Rayshon Smith. He breaks, books it down the sideline, snagging the Hornets their first almost six of the game as they punch it in right here. Whoop. There he goes, punching that in. Final score, that was a tight one, folks. McGregor runs away with it, 21-17. Now the number one Lions hosting Dibble, looking to ride an undefeated streak. After a slow start from both teams, Diggle looking to get something going. But it's a fumble. Lions pounce on it, and it's Wade Stalinus who takes it all the way to the house for six. Yeah, what a snag for the dude. And later in the quarter, Lions offense looking to score. As Bubba Jackson takes this handoff right here, breaks multiple tackles before finally finding the end zone. What a monster, an absolute take. He said, get off me, bro. Finds the end zone, 14-0 Lions. Second quarter action now. Dibble looking to make a field goal, but it's blocked eventually. And yeah, you see that blocked kick there. Final score, Franklin rolls 28-13. In a couple of weeks, we'll see Rogers play the Lexington Eagles, but tonight a non-conference showdown against Rockdale here. First quarter, K7 hands off to Caden Chapel, makes multiple guys miss, sets up Lexington for a score. And he keeps going. He's booking it. He's booking it. You think he's going to score? And he's pushed out of bounds, but they're set up right nice and easy to push that one right on in. Quarterback flies it downfield. Yeah. That's a tutty and a pretty beautiful one at that. And here comes Lexington. He books it downfield. Oh my gosh, taillights and all. He's all by himself. Final score, Rockdale runs away with this one. 27-13, actually, excuse me, in the fourth. We'll get you that final score soon. Now it's time for another break here on Friday Night Lights. After this, we go to class 3A and 2A. And uh, you all saw that Game of the Week trophy. Yeah, remember that one. What a game. We'll be right back.
in Central Texas, the Bosqueville Bulldogs looking for their first win of the season against a one and one Clifton squad. Cooper can under center runs to the right side, turns it inside. Yeah, he picks up a nice gain here for the Bulldogs and Kent drops back here, hits Easton Hill.